Hello, this is Zach Clark, Development and Leadership Coaching. I want to share with you today a process that we use in working with leaders who are really struggling to make the shift from being busy to being effective. Being busy to being effective. Now, I struggle with this in my life just like any other individual. There are times where I go, gosh, I am so busy, but am I really making the difference that I know that I can? Am I really focused on the things that are the most productive, the most effective for our organization? So as you can imagine, we are in conversations with leaders about this quite frequently. And one of the ways that we equip them and teach them uh, to really make that shift from busyness to effectiveness is to really embrace and live out excellent planning. And that really gets things going. That gets momentum moving and they're taking action. But then that busyness uh, virus kicks back in and they find themselves struggling with, uh, you know, how do I get started? How do I get unstuck? Uh, how do I come out of this funk? How do I keep from being so overwhelmed? And I'm going to walk you through on this video a very simple, uh, quick process you can use to shift gears and get out of that feeling of being overwhelmed and unstuck. But the first thing I want you to know is that feeling overwhelmed, feeling anxious, feeling stuck, is often a byproduct of getting better in planning. I think it's mainly because when we get better at kind of measuring what we're trying to accomplish, getting a clear roadmap in front of us, we can get a bit overwhelmed with all there is to do and the decisions that we have to make and how are we going to delegate and move all these pieces around with people. It is a big, big challenge. And uh, so the answer is not to stop planning. The answer is to develop a skill, a tool, if you will, that will quickly shift you out of that feeling of being unstuck and overwhelmed. And that's what I'm going to walk you through today. And I'm going to use a, an, the exact framework that I just took a leader through very recently uh, on my whiteboard here. So what we're going to do is you first have to revisit your key areas of contribution as a leader. Okay, this is three, four, five, usually not more than five things that are your areas of greatest contribution to your organization as a leader. Um, this is not all your projects. These are the things that you're responsible for that move you forward that really only you can do. If you don't do these, they are not going to happen. And so you've got to be clear on those so that we can make sure before we shift uh, forward that you are operating on the right foundation. So this leader, I challenged him to refocus on his key areas of contribution. I said, what are they? And it took him a while to clarify them, but uh, you know, the more he talked, uh, the more he got going and realized that he was very clear on these and just needed to revisit them. So uh, living out the vision, uh, the values, the mission, the vision of where we're going embodying the values that are, are, are the ideas of our organization at our best, and then the mission, which is how we do what we do and who we serve. You know, no one else could really uh, embody those, live those out in the particular way that he could, and, and he had to. The second is financial health. There are a lot of people involved in his organization um, in things that are impacting financial health, but ultimately, if that organization is not financially health, healthy, it falls at his feet. So that was area of contribution number two. How does he contribute to financial health? Number three, uh, in his case, was shepherding the staff and board. Uh, this was a smaller organization. He's the primary employee of the board. He's the primary leader of the staff. So making sure that uh, each day, each week, he's moving forward with his role of shepherding the staff and board. Next is self-leadership. I really like to see this on everyone's list. Usually it's the one that we don't think of because we're too busy thinking of everyone else. But if you are not leading yourself effectively, you're not going to be able to accomplish what you're truly called to do. And this is a hard lesson that I had to learn in my life is that this is not about selfishness and putting yourself first. This is about you're not able to serve others in the way that you want to, the way you're called to, if you're not leading yourself well 
first. And then lastly, in his case, thinking and planning. Uh, there was not really anyone uh, else in his organization that was going to be every day going to bed at night thinking and planning and pondering where the organization is headed. So those were his five areas of contribution. Now, I encourage you to clarify yours. Some of these may relate to you, some of them may not, but really get this down on paper because that is the foundation that's going to enable us to move forward and get unstuck and get out of being overwhelmed. So once you have this clear, then I challenge people to create or update what we would call a six by six. The idea of six major projects that move your organization forward in the next six weeks. So it's not uh, everything you're doing, but it's the six major things that must be accomplished to move you forward in the next six weeks. And so having these areas of contribution enables you to filter, if you will, all that you have to do and clarify the six by six in your life as a leader. Uh, but just having that written down isn't enough. We've also got to, using the six by six, we've got to chunk our time. We've got to schedule our time. It is so easy for us to get loosey-goosey. And I guarantee you, if you're overwhelmed, you are not budgeting your time well to accomplish these six key areas that you yourself have identified. So this is our foundation. The six by six begins to help us filter all that we have to work on. Chunking your time enables you to make sure that you've budgeted the time, 90 minutes at a time, 15 minutes at a time, whatever it is that you want to, to do to actually move forward on these six. And then we've got more filters. Now we're left with a ton of stuff, right? You've identified your key areas of contribution. You've got your six by six, you're chunking your time, but the reality is you've got a long, long list of projects and activities and tasks that you need to see accomplished. And so we filter, uh, we use two different filters to be able to clarify the actions that we feel like we need to take, but we cannot do it all. We can't do these. So what we do is encourage you to look at your list of everything else and say, okay, what can be automated? If it's something you find yourself doing more than once, it can be automated. I promise you in today's world, it can be automated by developing a check checklist, maybe using technology, maybe using other staff, maybe using other volunteers. If you're doing it more than once, it can be automated. Delegated, obviously we all talk about this, but that's that idea of saying, I'm taking this responsibility that I have for this project and I'm extending it to you. It's not giving away your work. You already identified your work. Your work are the key areas of contribution and your six by six. But you're saying, I'm delegating part of my responsibility to you. You may be even better at doing this than I am. So I am delegating this to you. So delegating those things on your list. And then eliminating. This is the one that no one wants to do. It's always painful. But frankly, there are a lot of things on your list that need to be eliminated. And the reason why I know that is there's so many things on our list that we aren't getting to. And we need to be honest with ourselves and say, you know what, if I haven't gotten to that in the past six months or the past year, I'm probably not going to. I'm just going to eliminate that on, off my list. No one will notice those things and then take it a little bit deeper. What's something that would be painful to stop doing, but you know deep down it's the right thing to do. And count the cost, but take action to eliminate things. And now we're on to our last filter, which is horizons of time. What we're left with is a series of projects or steps or actions that you do somehow have to be involved in. You've automated, delegated, and eliminated everything you can. You've got your six by six clear, but there's a lot of little details, some related to the six by six, some related to just day-to-day -day work. Use these horizons of time. And so prioritize things, not by importance, but instead by horizons of time. Is this something that has to be accomplished in the next two weeks? That's A, not letter A. Is it in the next six weeks? Letter B is in the next six months, letter C. And when you group these tasks by the horizons of time, you're going to free yourself up to schedule your time within these horizons. And instead of just pushing things off, pushing things off, pushing things off, causing more overwhelm, you've made decisions on what horizon of time to take these actions. This is a simple process, 
I've walked you through it quickly. I know it's going to help you get unstuck. It's going to help you get over that feeling of overwhelm, and it's going to get you back to those things that you must do to be able to move your organization forward. I look forward to hearing from you and seeing the actions that you take and the results that you achieve. Thank you.